Good afternoon. Are we live? Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. We're just making sure that we are live. Comment, say hello if you can see us. Maybe not yet. I'm trying. There we are. Oh, we're live. Okay. Good. There we are. Technical. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's Wednesday. Dynamic duo day. Yes, and I have a lovely guest with me today. Yep. Julia, which <laughs> you, if you're here, you all should know who that is. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. Yeah. Thanks for joining me today, Julia, for Thank Dynamic you. Duo. Um, what did we choose today? Inks. Well, what we can do with our inks other than just stamping. Fun with inks. Did we have a name for this? Um, inks in other ways. Inks in other ways. Yeah. There we go. So if you're <laughs> ever wondering what more you can do with your supplies, um, your ink pads, your re-inkers, this is what we're going to show you. So if you're watching, um, we would love to hear your questions. We will demo what we have planned, but if you want to know anything else, just be sure to put a comment in there. Um, and thank you everybody that's joining us live. Hello to everybody on replay. Yeah. So should I just go ahead and tip the camera down? Tip no, the camera. We, because we just talk as we go and we just want to show the things. I think that looks good. You can see us. Ah, oh, fabulous. There's the demo bar. You can tell it's well used and well loved. Well loved. And if you don't have one of these splat mats, you need to make sure one is either in your stash or on your Christmas wish list. That's we, right. Yeah, these are awesome. I think ours are under the paper and ink boutique yes. mat or something like that. Anyways, yeah. get one of those too. Okay, well, I'm going to show you just a couple of things I made last night, really quick, because Heather is not prepared. Uh, se Semi-prepared, and why se is that, Julia? Se because you have a new baby at home. <laughs> Fur baby. Fur baby, <laughs> let's clarify. Oh, yeah. sure. I should uh, come up in here. There we go. Okay, so this card here made that. Um, I'm going to demo how I did that. But this was all done with inks and re-inkers, and including the background, The what I did here is also a re-inker. Um, and I just think that's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, and then I did this one as well. And this is a watercolor technique. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So much fun. I love it. Okay, so I am watching um, on our screen here. So if you have any questions or comments, please put them there so we can see them. Can I use one of these? Yes. Perfect. Oh, Hi, everybody. actually, you wanted to demo uh, oh, ink blending. Yes. Do you want to start with that? Yes. Okay. okay. So we're just going to do a quick 101 here, too, on ink blending. I am a blender. I love ink blended backgrounds. I generally work with my um, Tim Holtz Oxide inks. If you're wondering what bag this is, this is the Totally Tiffany Edna bag. It holds about 18 um, ink pads in there comfortably. And of course the labels I've either just created myself or I've printed from the Ranger website. And it, they, that same bag also works really well for the interference inks. Oh nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I won't get rid of these bags. I love them. Okay, so in the past week we've had a couple new people into the store talking about card making, some basics, what they need to know, what they need to purchase, which we all know is extensive. But we really want to focus on the basics sometimes, where to start, what, what do we like to do. Um, so when they asked about inks, I, you know, talk about the different properties of the inks. And because I'm generally a number one oxide uh, user, that's kind of what I focus on for a lot of my techniques. So I was showing them um, ink blending because they were asking about the different brushes and how to use them, how to get a nice ink blend without getting the marks and the streaks and whatnot. So let's just do a real quick 101 here on that. And don't forget with our demo deal, all the ink pads and re-inkers are 25% off. If you are also like me and you are an Oxide ink fan, be sure to purchase the re-inker at the same time. With these inks, I find that you need to re-ink them a little bit more often than you would perhaps think. But it's just, it's so worth it. And the little re-inker lasts forever. So if you're purchasing the ink pad, just get the re-inker and then you don't have to think about it later. Okay? Yes, so, so there's options, right? Of course, we all have our preference in what kind of tool we like to use. This is a blender brush. I happen to be um, more of a fan, and I'll be quite honest, I have 
I have all the brushes. I've tried all the brushes. I'm a big fan of the tool. This is a glending tool. So these little guys oh. here. Oh, yeah. I just have the Velcro on the end. Really easy to hold on to. And then, of course, the dome foams. Okay. So for the most part, I've switched out all my foams to the dome. I prefer them. It's just easier for me. Yep. Blending in the brushes is a super personal preference thing though, of course, okay? So, quick 101 on ink blending. Back to basics here real quick, right? Oh, this looks more like it. And what I always tell people is ink blending takes practice. It does. And it takes layers. It does. Don't do one layer of ink blending and it not be perfect and get yeah. frustrated. You actually have to, I do three. I don't know how many layers you do. Yeah, it depends if I'm, like, I can tell right away if my ink pad needs to re be mm -hmm. re-inked. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I definitely have to go over a couple times. Um, depending on my ombre effect, what I'm going for, I might have too much of a harsh line. So you go over it for that. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So there's that. What was I going to say, too? Oh, and do you need a different brush and a different dome foam or foam for every color? No, you do not. You need something for a color family, per you know, perhaps. So this would be in, like, the brown family. I guess Julia wouldn't be happy if I use that for my blue. Well, you can. Oh, I, I, okay. <laughs> Let's use this. It's got blue on it. So the biggest thing is I just keep my crafty cloth by Cassandra handy. And when I'm going from ink to ink, I'll just give it a quick rub out just to take off some of the excess ink so I'm not transferring it. Great idea. So for your colors, for your brushes, we suggest a, a brush per family, color family. Yep. But if you're going to now switch between a Distress Oxide ink and say a Catherine Pooler, which is a dye-based ink, no, don't do that with the same brush. They are different properties of your ink pads. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing. If you're going from, you know, this is more of a... This is a pigment dye. Yes. And you don't want to contaminate a dye pad... With the pigment. With the pigment. So that's where I'd say you maybe want a set that you hang on to for your oxide inks and maybe you want a separate set you have set aside for your dye inks or your interference inks okay Oops, sorry. okay so there's the brush I however am going to just pick up some ink so and I'm a bit of a heavy-handed blender I like a nice kind of solid fluid ink blend so I hold on to my ink pad I give it a good I'm picking up a fair amount of ink onto the foam and I always suggest to people start off your paper start off to the side and bring your color in if you take your ink pad your ink blender or your brush and you come straight to the center and try to work it out sometimes you're going to end up with a harsh line that makes it harder to blend out so bring your ink from the outsides in okay so same thing i just hold my paper and i start on the outside and i circular motion and dropping down oh and there I went to the center but because the <laughs> pigment ink too is kind of wet it take it's a slower drying ink it gives you some time to work through the lines if you're using a brush with your Gina K inks um, definitely work it in from the sides and definitely give it that time to dry because they actually kind of self level in a way yeah as they dry so what it looks like now we not be what it looks like in an hour from now yeah okay so suggestions like I said start on the edges and then bring it in and then if you also want to create a, a kind of a silhouette look or maybe the insides a bit lighter that's another great way to do it so you're just bringing it off the side dropping your color down on the edges okay and because I'm gonna stick within the color family so same thing I'm gonna just take some of the ink off on my crafty cloth and same thing I'm gonna pick up some more I'm going to start off to the side and I'm going to bring it over kind of the edge of that first color and while I'm dropping the ink down there I'm not going to push quite so hard where it's going to combine here okay bring it over and this is why I love the oxide inks like come on they're just so they're creamy so and, creamy yeah, they they're blend beautiful. beautifully I got pretty good at blending the distress inks Yes. And then when these came out and I tried them, it was amazing. The, like, game changer. Total game changer. I just find this, with the oxide and the blending, this effect, 
just creamy smooth, easy mm -hmm. peasy. Yep. So when you get your line, if you want to do a two, three tone, whatever color background, you're going to end up with some kind of a line. And this is where you're going to kind of just go back and forth with your colors and drop it down again over that line. So you kind of minimize. It almost becomes like a seamless blend. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you see that, right? So I brought the second color in, cleaned off my brush, brought the first color back in over the line. Okay, same thing. Just pick, let's pick something a little bit darker here. So really, it does take practice, for sure, and it all depends on how heavy-handed you are. Oh, this one's a little bit different, but that's okay. Uh, there is, um, I'm trying to remember her name, on Pinterest. And she has got a great Pinterest board on different <gasps> blends yes. of inks. And for the life of me, her name is escaping me right now. If you just go to Pinterest and search distress Dis color combinations or mm -hmm. distress oxide color combinations, yeah. it's endless. And I have referred to that so many me times. Too, because she will blend colors that I wouldn't yeah. normally gravitate to, but make an, an oh, excellent so, blend. Yeah. And I love how in a lot of her blends, she'll add black right at the very bottom. Yeah. Or hickory smoke is another one. And it gives you kind of that nice base too, yeah. right? Like that settling mm -hmm. point. Yeah. All right, do we have any questions? Kay Werner. Ah, there Christina we go. Werner. Thanks, Mari. You get ah, the same you. time as Julia. Yeah. yeah. And um, I actually have a Distress Ink Blend thing on my Pinterest board, and it's all of it is from Kay Warner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was going to mention, too, because this is a slower drying ink, I normally take a post-it note or a scrap piece of paper and hold it. It's kind of where I hold my paper. Yep. Because as it's reactive to water, it's also kind of reactive to whatever you have on your hands, whether it be grease or the licorice you were eating you know 20 <laughs> minutes earlier type of thing the hawkins cheesies the hawkins cheesies <laughs> yeah been there done that kind of hold it with a post-it note or something so you're keeping the grease off your hands and a post-it note is really great because i have in desperate times have grabbed a paper towel and the paper towel has ridges yeah. and it will actually, actually leave, a mark. leave the ridges in your ink yeah, yeah. okay so, yeah so that was just a back to basics on some ink blending now, if people don't know, because this has the pigment in it and it does stay wet for ah. a while, you actually could oh, put embossing glazes or embossing powders on it and then heat it. So yes. if we had it with us, you could dump like a clear embossing glaze over top of that and make it a glazed glossy finish. Yeah. Which beautiful, is, beautiful, beautiful. And yeah. it's also reactive to water. Oh, right here. prepared. <laughs> It's gonna give me a fine mist, and I'm gonna actually there. there Ooh, will be that's some. pretty. And then I just oh, just grab a paper towel or just kind of a lint-free cloth. You can let it air dry too, but sometimes, of course, you want that instant. So you'll see some of the watermarks as they dry there. They're they're um, showing on that cardstock. Okay, Beautiful. and then you can put bigger drops and stuff like that. Anyways, love the oxide inks. 25% off today, just saying. Complete your collection. Don't forget the re-inker. Yeah. Okay, let's carry on. That was a back to basics just on a simple ink blend. No, that was great. And it's always good to remind people of, of kind of the basics of the ink blending. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I created this card here. That one there. So uh, let me grab out... I'm using the Vicki Booten Foundations paper, and that's what you use for your ink blend, too? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Always really good to use a smooth cardstock for yes. a really great blend. Yes. Smooth. Smooth cardstock. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the Lisa Horth, uh, Horton Anthracite. I'm going to use that. Now, this is a matte blendable ink uh, dye ink. Now, uh, before last night, I actually hadn't used it before. Oh! <laughs> but uh, Nancy B did a really cool technique with it and so I finally tried it last night. Now if you know and I've talked a lot about the interference inks so I've used two colors of interference inks but because some of these inks are overlapping the black I actually have four different colors on here and I only use two reinkers. And this is gorgeous. It's 
I, I hope you can see that. It, oh, you can. It's really picking up nicely. It was, after I finished it, I was so excited with myself. I was like, look what you did. You <laughs> go, girl. Okay, so I'm going to use this Dina Wakely uh, stamp set called Fly High. It's just, it's got a bunch of birds on it right there. Um, not normally a bird person, but I am going. But this one I really like. Okay, so I'm just going to take the anthracite going to ink this up and I'm just going to stamp this uh, just some different images across my card. Now because this is a dye ink, remember that makes it water reactive. So I'm going to do a technique where you can see that water reacts. Okay, let's do that guy there. Oops, I cut his head off. You uh, cut the bird's well, head off? Well, it's off the page. <laughs> wow. It's not no. American Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very, very cool stamp. Now, uh, for the life of me, I can't remember. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that is right. I, I look at this one. This one I find particularly difficult to figure out which way the bird is flying. Um, but oh, it is this yeah, way. I see. I understand what you're saying there on your stamp. Okay, there we go. Good enough. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, while that ink is still wet, I'm going to take my mister, and I'm going to mist this entire card. And look at already what you're seeing. Cool. It just kind of like this. It's amazing. But yet it kept the image. Yeah, really yeah. Nice. Isn't that cool? So now I'm going to go ahead and dry it. But just that, like, look at, and that actually worked better than the one I did last night. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah. So I'm just going to dry this, and then I'm going to come in with some of my interference reinkers. And I am using one of the Tim Holtz uh, tool caddies, the tools, the metal toolboxes. This is all of them. This is all of the reinkers, and they all fit in one just perfectly. Ooh, I yeah, love that. it's it's awesome. Sorry, no, just gonna wipe up that ink there. So there we go. That is now all dry. I'm going to answer. take. Just going to take a block here and I'm going to put a couple of these inks on and I'm going to do so remember these are the interference inks everybody. these are the interference re-anchors now I'm going to use a couple of different colors uh, yesterday on the one I did where is it here on this one I used magic garden and why didn't I keep them oh and sapphire gold so those are the two that I used on here. I'm going to use a couple of different ones. And what I'm going to do, and these ones you have to shake up. Because they are pigment, the pigment does separate. So I'm just going to shake this up. See, your reinkers are not just for reinking your pad. No. Ah, oh, there we go. I had to loosen the, uh, the, little, metal ball. the little metal ball in there. Yeah. Shake, shake, shake. Why didn't I do this before? I don't know. This shake is, it up. This is like a workout. Yep. Of course, you have to do this and you have to do the shimmy along with it, right? So you'll have to do this with your Distress Oxide reinkers as yes. well. So make sure you give them a good good shake till you hear that little ball moving in there yep. to get the pigments and everything nice and um, even throughout. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're just so gorgeous. Okay, so I just Can squeezed out. That? that one is Opal Blush. And this other one, what did I say it was? Lavender Fields. Now, I suggest, if you have the interference inks, I strongly suggest you make yourself a swatch book. So I did a swatch book, and on one side, you can see what the color looks like on white, and on the other side, you can see what it looks like on dark color paper. So I suggest doing that because it just makes it so much easier. Yes, when you're trying to pick out your color, yeah. So I'm just going to grab just a, just a plain paintbrush. I'm going to dip it in some water. I'm going to pick up some of that ink. And now I'm just going to start applying it to my image. 
And I'm going to overlap it into the black because that's where you're going to see, that is where you're going to see that secondary color of the interference inks. So again, I am not a colorist. I just like putting color down just to make it look so pretty. Oh my gosh. So I am just putting random color on all my birds. I'm going to pick up this second, this second color. I'm also going to apply that. It's a beautiful watercolor effect. It is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Let me set that aside. Now, this isn't dry yet, but if I hold it up to the camera and tip it, now you can see all of those gorgeous colors. Absolutely stunning. And the why I like this is because when you spray that ink and it kind of expands like that, it almost gives you a natural shadow. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to add the shadow or anything like it because it has done the work for you uh, from that stamped image. And I think that's absolutely gorgeous. I think that's a great effect to that ink. It is fantastic. I'm gonna show this too, Julie. I was just using that really nice kind of fine point um, paintbrush there. So the, this is, I recommend this set. This is awesome. You get your flat, your round. So anyways, and they're pretty pink. They're so pretty. That's what, we're, that's what we like to use for our brushes. So there you go. There you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, now on the background, because on this one, I did layer it on another piece. Uh, I'm just going to find it here. There we go. Now on that other one, I did use charcoal gold, but I'm actually going to use what I have left here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to my mat. I'm going to lay those inks in there. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to take this and I am just going to drop it in there and pick up this color. Now because I'm using the colors I did on the front, now I'm going to have a perfectly gorgeous mat that will uh, go really great with my birds on the front. Everything will match perfectly, right? Coordination. Coordination. It's a wonderful thing. Yes. So what I like to do is I get that ink on. I'm going to give this a dry. This is also an easy way to make a background. This would be, and I love making backgrounds Me like this. Too. I find it therapeutic just to sit, with, just make color combinations, yep. just build your backgrounds. And it's really easy. I actually have a little, um, and I think it's the card maker's file, um, oh, of just kidding? backgrounds. You know what I use for just backgrounds? One of the distress storage tins. Oh, that's smart. Yep. I use it while I have multiple. This one carries um, some of my distress ink minis. But I love this tin. And right now at home, I've got one on the go with a ton of Christmas card fronts. I've done like this. So there we go. And then all I need to do is take, oh, actually one other thing I like to do is I always like to take an ink pad and just ink my edges like so. I just find it adds a really nice frame. It, it's the finishing touch too. And it's so easy yeah. and so simple. Yeah, for sure. So then that will be um, matted right on there. Gorgeous. And look at that, everything perfectly coordinates. And that's just reinkers, people. That is just my reinkers. But now, what can we do with this? So Julia? I'll add yeah. a little bit of water <laughs> to that, and then I can start a whole new background of just simply pressing. No waste. No waste. And just look how gorgeous that is. And I will also do backgrounds like this and die cut out sentiment words. Or um, images, flowers, yes, leaves. Yes, absolutely. I like to use, um, use it for my shape die yep. cutting. Absolutely, another really fabulous way of um, using your reinkers. Look how gorgeous that is! Oh my gosh, love. All right, do you have something to share now? I do, and I'll get set up for my second one. Okay. And well, before I move on and forget again, I did have somebody ask me <laughs> the other day too. How do I store my different colors of foams? I just keep the packaging my foams come in, and I just do a colors in there. So I have multiple of these, and I just stack them in there. Uh, front to end so you don't transfer your color. Do you know what I did? Another customer. Yes. Uh, she bought three tins, the large tin for the gel plate storage. And I yes. asked her why she bought it and she actually made it. She put in Velcro and then she opens it up and all of her 
her uh, dome foams are all lined up in there. Gorgeous. Yeah, I thought with a that, label too, right? With oh, a, label. a label. Absolutely stunning. Yes. Yeah. So the I, things, I know. The I know. We learn too. <laughs> that would be a great tip to put in this week's challenge. Yes, yeah. for sure. What else? What else are you using? Yeah. It for? What else? Okay, so I just did a quick stamp on. Um, I actually have the Creative Scrapbooker Super Stock. This is also a real heavyweight mixed media paper, similar to the foundations. Um, and I grabbed this stamp from my collection. We do have these in stock still. So this is from All in Create, number 826. It's a beautiful butterfly stamp. Love this one. And I'm just going to show you what to do with your water brush in a couple weeks. So I'm on the splat mat here again we've already wiped it clean so I'm just gonna tap it down I'll just tap down a color couple oh colors. Mari says that stamp is a must yes 100 percent aren't all of the well, create stamps must? <laughs> it yes. feels like it's my collection has definitely grown over this past year too <laughs> So you could do this with your paintbrush as well, um, but I've just chosen a water brush. So I always just put it in my hand, make sure the water is running um, out nice and clear, make sure there's enough water in it. And then you can just pick up some of your ink up and just watercolor easy peasy with your ink pads and a water brush. Also a paintbrush, whatever you prefer. And then I'm just gonna brush it out, make sure the water is clear pick up another color here and then you can drop down some more color so again it's using your ink pad but I'm not stamping with it I'm just doing a real quick watercolor technique with it okay so a water brush make sure that's also in your stash very versatile and then as the ink dries I can go over it with different colors and then I can kind of build the layering of it as well. If I bring in the same color again or something similar to it before it's actually fully dry, it will just blend together. But if I want to create the layers in color, I can heat set this or let it air dry first. Okay. And then just run your water brush, give it a squeeze on a paper towel or your crafty cloth. Just make sure it runs clear again before you bring in another color. Okay. So I'll set that one aside for a second, but I'm just going to grab out another piece. See, it always feels like you're grabbing two because they're so nice and thick. <laughs> okay. Wipe your surface. Okay. And while I've got the little cubes out, so now the difference between the oxide and then the actual distress ink, yes, they're different sizes. I use these ones more, so I have all of these in full size. And I have the distress inks in the minis because I'm not using them quite as much or for the same Purpose. I use these a lot with my blender brushes for my backgrounds and whatnot. This I seem to do for more detail effects, stuff like that. So I don't don't require them in the big pad anymore. Okay. So take down. Let's do some more purples here. Okay. Tap it down. I'm just going to choose a few colors of purple. on the spot out there same just gonna give it a little spray and then it brings all the colors to the surface give it a press pick up some colors and then I could heat this and then add another layer of color but I'm gonna just dip it back in kind of move it around a bit same like Julia was doing with the reinkers and you can just build build color on your background with just um, some water and your ink pads. I actually do this a lot with my ink pads, okay? And that's the distressing, so it's a little bit brighter there than you would see with the oxides. Always make sure your surface is clean, remove any ink from it before you go um, to do another one, especially if you're going between a regular ink and an oxide ink. So with the oxide ink, you'll see the difference here. push them down. I'm going to add a little bit of water and this of course just helps them blend more. Another piece of the mixed media 
uh, cardstock. We'll press it down and pull up the color. Okay. And as it dries, because this is the oxide, it will just dry more to a chalky finish. And it is really, really gorgeous if you let it dry in between your layers. And then what I've been doing a lot lately too is once it's dry, then I'm doing a second layer in a mica spray, in the Distress Mica Sprays, which looks lovely over the backgrounds. Okay, I'm just gonna pick it up. So don't, we just don't want you to think your, your stamp pads, ink pads are just for stamping. So not just for stamping. No. See, build your backgrounds. Use the inks. The, all the inks will work for this purpose. Your interference, your Catherine Pooler, everything. Distress inks, distress all oxides, all to new. Any yeah. inks that you've got, you can use inks and reinkers. Yes. So make sure you have a splat mat. And the other one I really like, actually, I have it on my surface at home right now, is the new uh, multi surface mat from uh, Tim, Tim Holtz. Holtz. Yeah. It's the big white one. Love being it. Okay, so I'm going to share one more technique, and I love using my inks for watercolor. Let me just grab, again, I'm working with the uh, Catherine, or not Catherine Pooler, the Vicki Booten Interference. Oh my but God. I, we have all the things <laughs> spread out here, so you have to forgive us. The Vicki Booten yep. Foundations. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually just going to put some clean water in my mat. I'm taking a flat brush for this one. I'm just gonna get that wet. And I like to pre-wet my paper. Now I'm just gonna be creating an ombre effect right up the center of my card. So I'm just gonna be adding water kind of in that way. And I'm being pretty generous with that. Um, now I'm gonna bring in my inks. Wipe that up. So I've actually got a stamping block here and I'm gonna take my Catherine Pooler and I could do this with my ink pads or with my reinkers. And I'm just going to smush these right on If you on want gorgeous, there. vibrant colors and a huge variety of them, these oh. Catherine Pooler inks are the way to go. Oh, they are amazing. Lovely. Lovely. Okay, so I just picked up a little bit of my ink and I'm just gonna kind of tap it into that wet area and really let the water I put on there do the work for me. Now that first color, it's pretty light, so we're not gonna see a whole lot of it there. I'm not gonna dry it. I'm gonna stick my brush back in the water. I'm gonna pick up my second color. I'm gonna come in here and do the same. There we go, just gonna do that. Again, letting the water do the work for me. And now I'm gonna grab this last color, and this one's pretty dark, so I usually like to just grab some extra water, and kind of water it down just a smidge. There we go. And I obviously have ink from another pad on my hand because it's coming off on my card. There we go. So there's my inks on there. Now I usually let this dry on its own. Um, I like to let it dry naturally rather than taking my heat tool to it. But for the interest of time, I am gonna do this. Now I'm gonna show you something cool with the Catherine Pooler which I learned a few months ago. I have used it quite a few times on my own personal cards, but I don't think I've ever shown it on a live. So I'm just gonna just give this a quick dry because there's a lot of moisture on there. I'm just gonna tip it back and forth to spread things out. Let that dry. But if you put your water on your paper first, it really uh, allows the ink to kind of flow and blend and you don't really have to worry about getting too sharp of a point on it and that's why I let it dry naturally but because I'm taking the heat to it some of it's drying sooner than others so I am getting lines but that's because I'm heating it with the heat tool there's a lot of moisture yeah Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to tap that. I just want to, just in the interest of time. Normally I would just let it dry. Now with the Catherine Pooler, uh, because they've got this really nice oval shape, what you can do with it is you can place it directly on your card. And I usually press it a couple of times 
let it sit there mm. and now you've got this perfect little oval that now you can emboss a, a sentiment yeah, on it or you can for sure yeah and then put it right across it but look at that it's giving you already the nice inked perfect oval which i love we just restocked our wonder filled thread we've got a purple that would look lovely yes. i would wrap some rip like yeah uh, or the silver one yes. we got a nice silver and the gold and then pop up your sentiment yeah look at that isn't that gorgeous now uh, another thing that i like to do and i gotta show it to you because everyone who's ever taken a class with me or has been in a class where i've been um i like to splatter i was please do that oh I was you gonna just show that getting too? ready to show yes Yes, yes, yes. Love that technique. Um, I am looking for charcoal, charcoal gold. Ugh. I can't find the reanchor, so I'm just going to use the pad. Let me close that up. It's going to clean up my mess as I go. So I'm going to take the charcoal gold. Now this is probably my favorite color, but I'm going to take a nice skinny brush. I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to grab. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Yes. I love those inks because they're just so magical. You see the ink, this, but then when you use it, oh my gosh. Yeah, stunning. Mind blown. There you go, a little bit of splatter on there. And now I've got a perfect background. I can just die cut it a sentiment, maybe add some metallic thread on there, and we're good to go. Yeah, so the splatter technique is super popular. If you have a lot of white space on your project, it's a great way to kind of take away but still keep some of that white space, which I love to see. Yeah. And so your ink pads and your reinkers are both fabulous for this method. Yeah. I know. I mean, you've got your reinkers, right? And you know, you are going to use it to re-ink re your pads, um, but there's so much ink in there. And the other reason why I like the reinkers is because the, the color is so much more intense. Yes. Out of the reinker than it is off, off the pad. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's a great way. So the uh, suggestion always is to let the first layer dry of color so that whatever you're splattering doesn't get absorbed by anything that's right. still, you know, waiting to set. Right. You want it to kind of be that top layer that sits on top of the other inks. Exactly. Yeah, so same thing. I just used my Distress Ink Pad. I'm going to furrow this. Same thing. Just wanted to add some splatter. I don't want to splatter on that, so I've got to move it. <laughs> I'm just going to add a blue splatter to that. And it would really stand out if I did um, a Catherine Pooler or an interference ink over this, but just so easy. Just add something and just, yeah, yeah, super fun. I just, just, that is, just for fun, I grabbed out, this okay, is actually, what stamp is that? This is the new one oh from Seth my. After. I didn't get it when it first came out and it arrived yesterday and I grabbed it. That is, oh, I love and these I for layering. I love these. So I added... Just to kind of also draw your attention to the splattering, I used charcoal gold and stamped on there as well to just kind of draw that line in there. So that is perfect for a sentiment in there. Absolutely draws your eye right across. And just so easy. I mean, oh, just so easy. One layer away from magic. Yes, one layer away from magic. Isn't that the story? Oh, <laughs> such an enabler, Julia. I know. <laughs> Okay, did you have anything else to share? I just want to talk Brayer real fast. Oh, yeah, Brayer. Now, we yeah. could go on and on with inks. Oh, yeah. It's endless. Inks are life. I just inks are inks. life, that's for sure. Card making, scrapbooking, mixed media, all the things. Home decor, you just need the inks. Yeah. And you need great storage for it. So always. Oh, Mari that. says, give me all the splatter. Give me Isn't all. That? Yeah, Mari loves splatter, yeah, too. Yes. Love splatter. So while we're talking about splatter, two things that I really like, you know, three really. Well, all the things, but <laughs> let's focus here on the splatter. We saw the Dina Wakely gloss sprays. Mm -hmm. Everybody should own a black, a white, and the gold, which I believe is called gilt. Yep. Mari, if you're listening, I'm sure you will agree on those. The gloss sprays are amazing. Stunning. For and splatter. I love them for splatter because they actually dry to kind of like a clear, raised finish, too. The perfect added touch. And it, it almost gives you that embossed. Like you've you've done some embossing on it, but it's just a good thing. Yeah. Love it. And then I just set it aside to dry, and it's good to go. The crafter math is real. The crafter math is hundred percent real. Drives me a little bit batty in the process. But. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you know me, you know me. Okay, so I just have a Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer here. This is the larger of the two sizes. Okay, love this. I'm just going to pick up some ink. So you want to rub your brayer around, pick up the ink on it. Super easy to clean. And you can just, um, generally I start off the edge, kind of depends on what effect I'm going for, but you can just create any sort of background by um, rubbing your brayer on it, creating some layers that way. You can even put some elastics over your brayer, rub it through some bubble wrap, create extra textures on it too. We have Christmas music playing here, and I must say I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> there are days when it's like, no, nah, I can't do Christmas. But there are days when it's really nice. Yep. Oh, look at that. So just taking... It's just cool. Something different, right? Now, just looking at this, another thing, like if you had a background stamp, I would take a background stamp <gasps> and... Oh, you have a background stamp. I brought one. Are you, you going to put water on it? You can do the Ooh, finishing touch. Look Julia. at this. Look at she's let she gave it to me. Yeah, this is a tag. This is a duo effort. This is a true duo. I'm yeah. just gonna put this on. Okay, so this stamp, everybody. Okay, sorry. I know I say that about everything, but if I love the things, I want you to oh, own the things. I love this one. Julia love she wore out her first stamp yeah. if that tells you anything. I wore, wore it, it out. out. I, I and yet I can't throw it out. Really? No, it's but you still, own two now. I own two, and the original is sitting there on my shelf. You can just retire that one. Yeah. Julia. <laughs> so, anyway, sorry. Wendy Vecchi background stamp. This is the script background stamp. It's we love it. We love it. We love it. Love, love, love. Yeah. Okay. So what I did is I sprayed some water on my craft mat, dipped my stamp in it. Now I, I took a look. There is quite a bit of water on there, so I'm gonna stamp off the water maybe a little bit. But she's not stamping it off on paper towel because no. it would remove way too much right. of the water. So now what I'm gonna do, so that's wet, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop it on there. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. You just want that water to activate that ink, right? Yeah. So you don't wanna like mess it, lift it up, put it back down. You just kinda wanna give it a few seconds. And if you push too hard, you're gonna drop down too much water. Too much yeah. water. So now that's still wet. But if we take the heat tool to it, it's going to start lightening up. And it's very subtle. But, but it it's adds very to that cool. layer. Yeah, it adds yeah. another layer. So because these are water reactive inks, anytime you add water to it, it's going to activate it, right? And then the more it dries, the more it will appear yeah. as well. Yeah, the more it dries, the more it's going to appear. Now, if mm -hmm. I take this, I'm just going to do it a little bit more. Do you want to try it on here too? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a good on this one. one. I'm going to lay it on here. Ooh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm just going to lift that off. So you don't want to rub it. You just want to lift. Lightly tap it. Yeah. Lightly tap and then you get that effect as well. So I know you can't really see the writing. That's not really the point. It's just to add that other layer in your ink. And when you've got a water reactive ink, why wouldn't you do that? Exactly. Do the thing. Perfect. Is, Try is, all the things. You know that, what? It's just ink. It's just paper. You have right. You're no not, reason not to try. You're not performing brain surgery. No one will die. No. Exactly. <laughs> if you get your inks wet. Exactly. Get out the inks and the paper. What script stamp is that? Oh, this one here. It's the Wendy Vecchi. Yep. Yeah, Wendy uh, Vecchi. Script stamp. Love it. Yeah. I'm just going to turn this up. Let's just. Whoa. Whoa. whoa that went really fast. I hope nobody got nauseous. Yeah, thanks <laughs> I got, for the warning. I got nauseous just, <laughs> just watching it. So there you go. Thanks so, so much. Hello, for, Dynamic Duo. Thanks we for joining me today, Julia. Killed it again. Thank Lovely. you for joining me. Yep, just, and so uh, here we go. Maybe what we'll do is we'll take some glamour shots. I always like to take mine home, mount them on cards. And oh, then, yeah. that's really smart. Yep. And maybe I'll do that. I'll take this one home. I'll put a sentiment on it. Yep. And then we'll post them in our inspiration group. Sure. Let's do that. Awesome. Okay, so two weeks from today. Yep. You're I'll be, be here back. with um, another guest. Uh, Cassandra's going to join me in two weeks. And it's about, do we tell them? I don't even remember. Okay. Honestly. Yeah. We won't like say, said, just in case we change our minds. Family, so <laughs> little sleep. Yeah, yeah what's your puppy's sleep. name? Lola. Lola. And it's a good thing she's cute. <laughs> because she doesn't sleep. No. 
<laughs> or she doesn't sleep when you want to sleep. No. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Don't Two forget weeks. 25% off your ink pads, yeah. re-inkers, all the things. 25% off today and tomorrow in person or online at the shop.